The great masters of marine, as if calling themselves such could make them so. Thousands of years ago, during the height of the Giscari Empire, marine was second only to old geese in wealth and glory. A paradise by the sea, if one didn't mind the constant clinking of chains and cracking whips. Slaves book marine, and on their backs the city rested like a litter. Then came the dragons of Valyria. The masters of old geese would not bow, so they burned. The Valyrians tore down their walls, burned their pyramids to ash, and sowed their fields with salt and skulls. An old slave woman once told me that the Valyrians intended to break the chains of the Giscari slaves, absorbing them into the Valyrian freehold where every man held a vote. But the great masters of Marine received their new overlords in the great temple, plying them with gold, wine, and all the wealth that slavery had brought them, and the Valyrians instead took up the whip themselves. I do not believe it. As their empire expanded, the Valyrians needed more and more bodies to feed their mines and colonies, when no wage could ever tempt a free man. The great masters merely accommodated their new customers, staying rich as the Giscari Empire crumbled. After the doom fell on Valyria, the great masters worried for their fortunes. By this time, the Valyrians were their greatest providers and purchasers of slaves. Then the Dothraki horse lords swept out of the plains of Essos and proved to be as fond of slaving as the dragon lords before them. The great masters grew richer still. For the first time in its history, the great masters alone ruled marine, and chaos ruled the rest of the world. The fighting pits swallowed men who in previous centuries would have filled the ranks of the Valyrian armies. Without these soldiers to maintain order, the wealthy had to buy their own, which the good masters of Astapor were more than willing to sell. If the buyer's nerves still needed calming, the wise masters of Yonkai could sell him further release. The great masters, the good masters, the wise masters, yet none were so great, good, or wise that they recognized our queen for what she was. Her ancestors had destroyed them, then become them. Perhaps they assumed she would bend as easily, but our queen does not bend. She breaks.